Welcome to Cigar City Radio, episode number 32. I'm your host, Randy Ojeda, and making the magic happen, Mr. Jason Solanez. Hey, Randy, if you ever in your pajamas? Uh, I, actually, I probably. I'm pretty, pretty, I'm pretty sure I everyone has. a common thing. Yeah, that's pretty you know, common. Because, yeah. well, you know, that, that pajama mood, when it strikes, you just hey. can't wait. Yeah, I'd pop that button for it. <laughs> For more episodes, head to CigarCityRadio.com or subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. Just search for Cigar City Radio. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And on all those networks, our username is Cigar City Radio. This episode of Cigar City Radio was recorded at the Blind Tiger in Ybor City. The Blind Tiger is a 1920s speakeasy-style coffee shop serving coffee, tea, vegan pastries, and more. With locations in Ybor City and Seminole Heights, you can check them out at blindtigercafe.com. Cigar City Management has teamed up with Northside Festival to bring the Noche Buena Party Series to Brooklyn. Join us Thursday, June 8th at Gold Sounds for a night of kick-ass music featuring Colombian-born pop outfit Salt Cathedral, the fuzz-filled Dirty Dishes, all the feels of Fruit and Flowers, Yucky Duster, a band who swears they're not punk, and the band that provided the intro for our podcast and this song you're hearing right now, Parrot Dream from Santiago, Chile. If you're anywhere near Brooklyn, you don't want to miss this one. Tickets are available on Ticketfly, and they're going fast. For more info, head to CigarCityManagement.com slash Northside. Our guest on this episode is Tampa's Own Pajamas, a new project from songwriter Shane Shook. He's got a new EP out called Smile Lines, and he's throwing an EP release party this Friday, May 12th, at Paper Crane in St. Petersburg. And yes, it is actually a pajama party. As the event details state, come in whatever you'd consider to be pajamas. Wow, that's pretty that's pretty wide open. I mean, I've got some risque pajamas. That could get real interesting real mm, fast. I can't wait to see what's there. <laughs> what, a, what a party. <laughs> if you can't wait, you can listen to Smile Lines on Spotify via our playlist, the Tampa Mixtape, and the Cigar City Radio Companion playlist. You can also find more on pajamas at facebook.com slash pajamas music. So here it is, episode number 32. <laughs> working on the fame part. We're working, working on it. We're working on you know, it's funny. We we really wanted to catch your set at a uh, Gasparilla Music Festival. Right, right. Um, you were playing in the the little amphitheater. The amphitheater. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, you know how it is. There's like, I think we had to interview uh, somebody at the same time. And it was oh like, yeah, yeah. I'm sure like, it was hectic. Yeah. But some someone yeah. we did interview mentioned the pajamas show, and they thought it was totally cool. And they're yeah. they're a person that would never listen to that kind of music. Right on. <laughs> yeah, that's they're, awesome. They're totally into it. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, because we interviewed you know a bunch of random concert goers, people mm-hmm. that were just hanging out and watching, you know, asking them what they were excited about and stuff. And somebody right. was like, "Oh yeah, I saw this guy. He calls himself Pajamas." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and I was yeah. like, "That's cool. That's awesome." Yeah, I got some really great uh, response from that. A lot of good feedback. And, you know, it was it was one of like the hotter days we had had in a while. Yeah, and people were just like sweating it out with me. You know, like cool. I felt bad for them because I actually had some shade to like to perform in. Um, but yeah, they were just, they were just chilling, sweating it out. And it was, it was a great response. I mean, like I remember I checked my phone after I played, I probably had like 10 new followers and just Sweet. like people like tagging me and taking a bunch of pictures and photos and stuff. And, uh, it was pretty awesome, you know, like, cause that was the first festival I'd played as pajamas. 
Um, it's actually a fairly new project. Mm -hmm. um, I just started performing out late last year. I didn't even think I was ready, to be honest with you. Um, but my buddy's like, come play a show. My buddy Joe, he's a, he, he does Broken Mold Entertainment. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I um, just started playing, and then uh, then it led to, to GMF, which was a great opportunity. You know, there's no way I was going to pass that up, you know. So, yeah, it was it was a great day, man, really great yeah. day. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it out to the next the next day, but um, that Saturday was pretty fantastic. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We, were there, we were there that whole day, and, yeah, it was brutal. Yeah. Brutal in the day. It got very nice at night, though. It but, did. It did. Yeah. Once the sun went down, we were, I mean, my girlfriend and I, we were just having some beers, and, like, I was like, oh, man, this is perfect weather now. Yeah, you know? yeah now, <laughs> now it is. Right? Now the sun's gone away. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, like you said, yeah, this is a fairly new project. I know mm -hmm. you kind of, you just released an EP with mm -hmm. Smile Lines. Right. Is that, right. that's kind of the first taste of the of pajamas. Exactly. Right? Yeah, it's, it kind of started out, you know, I hadn't, I had been writing since my, my last band was called Mouse Fire. We were yeah. from around here. Uh, we broke up in like 2010 or so. And I had like gone different routes with like writing and demoing and, um, you know, I wasn't going to take anything too serious. I just wanted to like, just kind of write at my own pace. I didn't really need to jump back into it. So I was writing like folky stuff. And I'm like, nah, it's not really my style. And then I was writing just some like more just like indie stuff, a little darker than mouse fire stuff. And it's like, I don't really like that sound either. Then I just started toying around more with like the synth and like arpeggiators and, uh, you know, lots of jazz chords. And I just kind of was like, you know, what? I really like this fun sound. It's fun. You know, it's kind of, you know, stems a little from like the new wave feel, but it's got that, you know, like modern electro pop sensibilities. I really don't know what to classify it as, but, uh, but yeah, I just started out and I wrote the song, the song smile lines, uh, or actually, no, Touch the Stars, and it's very synthy. And I was like, oh, this will be the one that really kind of it, it kind of gave me the, the viewpoint I wanted lyrically, mm -hmm. um, the sound that I thought, you know, okay, this is the sound I'm going to go for because I, re I really enjoy this. And then, you know, Smile Lines popped out, and then Beauty Sleep, and then uh, We Can't Be Friends. They all kind of came out in the same time frame. And I was like, oh, I, I have an EP now. I wrote some other demos, um, but I wasn't quite... Like I just thought, no, this is the these are the four songs that need to go on onto this little EP, and I think an EP is a great introduction too. Absolutely, you know, to like work on a full length right now, just with working and family and you know everything that's going on. It would have been another year before you heard anything. So yeah, you know, plus so. with the way the industry works now, I feel like especially for a brand new artist, it's like people don't want to commit to you know a 12 13 song album totally. from somebody they haven't heard from yet you exactly know? But three four songs is a little more digestible right you know it's easier for people to see that online so yeah, yeah i'll i'll add that to a playlist and listen to those four songs you know exactly um which is what i did for smile lines right on, <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you for that and, thank uh, you actually uh, did you work on it with matt reisinger with feedback i did yeah um i tracked everything in my house mm -hmm. and um kind of crudely like it sounds all right you know but um that's what I kind of liked about it too. It kind of has this like yeah, lo-fi feel. Raw. And then, um, so I sent it off to, uh, to Matt. He and I actually performed together. I, I had not known him before, uh, but he and I opened up for uh, JT Brown, uh, his mm -hmm. CD release show and, uh, at Paper Crane in St. Pete. Yeah. And, uh, Matt kind of saved the day cause our, I think our sound guy that was supposed to run it couldn't show up. So Matt was like very proficient and, Oh yeah. He's a good, he's, he's a good backup sound guy. He, <laughs> That's yeah, for sure. yeah. So he made, I mean, he got it sounding awesome. So, uh, he saved the day and he's also a really great guy. Yeah. Very, very, uh, very wise, very knowledgeable about, you know, the, you know, audio engineering and producing. And, um, so I knew that this would be the guy that, you know, if I, when I send it off to get mixed, I would really like to, for him to do it. And fortunately he had time. He said that it was one of his favorite projects to work on. He he uses it as a uh, kind of like a resume piece to kind of show other people. Yeah. Um, he fell in love with it, which was really great, you know. And he said they were like just a lot of fun, and so we've kind of really forged a friendship just through that one show, and then uh, you know working together on the EP. Um, and he he did a great job, you know, really kind of brought some life into it, made it sound just a little bigger. It's kind of got this really like lo-fi quality but it's really crisp and clean at the same time it is yeah it's yeah it's, it doesn't sound too lo-fi you know right like right it, it sounds sounds like one of those records that's like it's lo-fi by intention not by necessity you totally. know? <laughs> like totally, yeah, yeah yeah exactly um but it, i love that there's still a lot of really great hooks on the record too because you know I, I listen to a lot of like electronic leaning music and mm -hmm. sometimes i get lost with it because it's 
you know, it's just beats on beats on beats. Right, and I'm like, that's right. cool, you know, but I want a song, you know, I want a well written song with a good hook that I can latch on to. Well, thank you for saying that. Cause that's, that's something that I've actually, I've always, I've been a songwriter for a very long time. Like mm-hmm. the music part kind of happens quickly for me. Like all the little melodies that pop out over the bass line or guitar line or whatever it is, or the drum beat. And then, you know, I didn't start singing until Mousefire, our, our second record, our, our singer left in, mm-hmm. in between that time. So I kind of picked up the baton and started singing and found out, man, it's really hard to do and, and to, to do over and over and over to play nights back to back. You know, it's really like a whole nother realm that I was not prepared for. So after that, I learned a lot. And then uh, writing the hooks, you know, the melodies, I knew that they had to be strong. And I, I, I'm a sucker for pop structure. You know, oh, me too. Give me a little intro, <laughs> a little, you know, verse, bridge, chorus and repeat. And then I love fade outs. I mean, every song yeah. on my EP actually, actually fades out. And I was like, damn, I, I think I'm addicted to the fade out, but you know, but, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's what I like, you know? Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, thanks for saying that. Cause the, the hooks are always the hardest part for me. I mean, I, I'll fight with them, you know, sometimes like I might get that just like little spark. That's like, yeah. Oh, okay. That's the, that's where I need to start with. And then I'll see what I can build on. Some I literally like, I'll record melodies and then just scratch the whole thing. And then eventually, after enough chiseling away at the stone, I finally get something I'm pretty happy with, you know. Um, so thank you for saying that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, and, and that comes across. And it also makes it more accessible, too. It's not uh, it's not as daunting of a thing to get into. When totally. You know, no hooks. Right, but I guess it depends right. on what you're going for too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like if you know, if you're going for more like uh, like using like filters and like soundscapes and bigger buildups and the drop, the beat drop and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. You know, I I definitely I don't I think I could play a festival like an EDM type festival, mm-hmm. but that they if they come to watch my show, I hope they know that it's not like you know ten minute long riff on yeah. on these electronic beats and stuff. It's I love electronic music and I definitely incorporate it, but I find myself in this like purgatory of, I still love riffy bass lines. I still love, mm-hmm. you know, jazzy guitar. Yeah. And you do um, have like straight up guitar lines on yeah, the record. So. Lot, lots of it. Very rhythmic too. Yeah. Which I, in Mousefire, I, I, I wrote most of the music, Joey, Bruce and I, uh, he kind of, he and I kind of forged the sound. Um, and so he did more of the rhythm and I did more of the lead. So I'm kind of class myself, classified myself as a lead guitar player. Hmm. Um, and then, so I've slowly shifted into just more rhythm, you know, uh, lots of different chords. Um, I still like to riff, you know, I just find that I leave that up to the synthesizer now yeah. more than the guitar, you know, um, but sometimes if I feel like it's been too long since I put a nice riff in, I'll like, ah, okay, let, let's get a nice guitar riff in there. Yeah, yeah, know? let's crank up the distortion. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, get a little fuzz going, you know. Yeah. And obviously reverb and delay. You can't not have reverb and delay. Right. You know? Yeah, <laughs> so sure. For me, I mean. Yeah. But. So when you perform, it's just you on stage, though, right? Just like, me, man. Yeah. Just, just you, the synthesizer. Like, what's the setup like? Right. So, yeah, I have, you know, I have my laptop. Um, I have my MIDI controller. Um, little interface. Um, I have a, a vocal processor, uh, my guitar. Mm. And then so, um, you know, just try to mix the tracks real clean. Um, you know, eventually I've, I've thought about adding members, but at the same token, I felt like I'm kind of got a good pace going right now. So, you know, I'll just try to introduce more material and yeah. then, and then maybe when it comes time for, for a full length or something, try to piece together a couple players to kind of work with me on the record because I did everything myself this time, which is a lot of fun. But sometimes if you, you know, if you, if you have other players that you trust and you really respect, like if they come up with like little things that you wouldn't maybe not have thought of or, mm. uh, you know, that could be great. But yeah, so for right now, it's just me. Um, I feel like a stand up comedian sometimes, like, cause I'm just like, just me in a microphone <laughs> yeah. glorified with That's a couple really hard to do, man. Dude, I think being a stand up comedian is probably well, the hardest job yeah, on, I, on the I planet, agree. you know? Yeah. Which actually... I'm trying to develop my cynical side even more to where when I'm older, maybe I will give my hand at it. Okay. But, so this is a good start, you know, so because, you know, I haven't played for like huge crowds yet, but I can imagine the, the more and more attention it receives, you know, just being up there on stage. It's like kind of want other dudes up there with you, you know, bit, to, yeah. to play with and uh, just fill out the sound. And it's kind of it kind of sucks, too, to be at the mercy of the sound guy, too, when you when you have tracks like backing tracks. Yeah, because um, you never know what the PA is going to be like. You don't know the monitoring setup. Um, you just, you know, I've played 
very small places. I actually played a shuffleboard court in uh, in St. Pete, right? And on. they didn't have much for for PA, and it was outdoors, so the sound was just like just diffusing as quick as it came out. So it was yeah. really hard to like get into it because it's dancier, upbeat type music. But at the same token, you just get up there and do it, and it's a lot of fun. And it, people seem to be responding really well. And you know, I'm just happy to be out there again. And if I got to do it alone for a while or forever, I'll keep at it. You know. But yeah. No, no reason to to plan that far ahead. I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just let it go. To... Just let it evolve. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. I've I've been talking to a few uh, few guys I know that are really talented musicians. You know, bass, guitar, keys, drums. Um, but they're, they've got projects going on too. So it's kind of hard to like link up and make it happen. But yeah. I'm thinking maybe if I can crank out another EP, you know, for later this year or early next year, um, after I play for a while, maybe I can, you know, get those guys together or something. Yeah. So by the same token, I mean, part of what's cool about electronic music is that you can do it yourself. That is true. You know? Yeah. You don't need a whole, a whole band to do it. Right. So right. It kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility and freedom on stage. Too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. And, and I mean, cause people's lives are busy, you know, getting rehearsals together is sometimes hard. So yeah. all I got to do is fire up the laptop and go into the room and just, you know, set up and, and practice, you know, so it does make, yeah, that is nice definitely, yeah. it really is. Yeah. And I do, I do like it, but at the same token, I do wonder what it would be like if other people were on stage. But I think that is one of the, the things too, that people enjoy about it. It's just me up there playing my guitar, playing my synth, you know, singing yeah. and, uh, like, you're a one man band. They like it. You know? <laughs> so that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And th there's definitely a bit of a electronic scene that's that's building up here in the Tampa Bay area. Oh yeah, I don't for know sure. If you could tell me a little bit more about that because I know I know Freedback, I know right. you, I know a couple other artists. Right. Um, Roger Thomas is another one too. He plays uh, he plays drums in Queen of X. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, he does all sorts of stuff. He plays. I think he plays in a band called Pleasures too. Yeah, I know. Pleasures. Um, they're on tour right now. Uh, he's really great because he does like these really intricate chords over like hip-hop style beats and there's really no vocals it's all pretty much just instrumental but he's really fantastic i don't um and obviously feedback you know uh his his setup looks like a spaceship oh it does know? yeah and it's it sounds like a spaceship it's it's pretty <laughs> sick man i i love his stuff um you know i i really i'm kind of like um pretty reclusive guy i'm kind of mm -hmm. like a hermit you know i mean besides like my family and stuff, but I don't go out that much. Um, I'm just now learning about what's going on again in the music scene yeah. you know, around here. But yeah, there is, there seems to be a lot of electronic artists because, you know, making digital music is so much easier now. And, yeah. uh, you know, you can literally get up on stage with a laptop and, or what, however you want to do it and, and make it happen, you know? Um, yeah, so I'm I'm looking to find more electronic artists to perform with. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and like uh, Mouth Council, uh, yeah, yeah, is great too. Yeah. We had uh, um, Billy Mays on the show. Um, we actually had Freedback on the show too. Cool. Yeah. Oh, right on. <laughs> so, right on. Um, but yeah, Mouth Council is like a totally different. Oh beast. man, that yeah. was that's so cool. Um, I just went to the Polyenzo one year anniversary of Pure in the Plastic. Yeah. Um, at Paper Crane, and uh, Mouth Council opened the show up, and it was just like. It was very cool because obviously it's it's bringing people to come up and and kind of add a little line yeah, to it's, it's to interactive. Wayne's right yeah. yeah and they there's some some people that got on there with like great voices or just really interesting sounds and and what he's able to do I don't even know what he's doing I I know he's got <laughs> looping pedals but you know at the same token he does a great job of making it sound just awesome and all the filters he does and the looping and uh, the way he chops it up is very cool, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a super creative dude. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Mouth Council is something, something else for sure. Well, and he so. does. Uh, was it ambient? Is it am ambient installations yeah, or yeah. something like that? Infinite yeah. Third. Infinite yeah. Third. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I caught him at Green Bench doing that one day. Just randomly, my girlfriend and I went up there to go get a beer, and he was uh, he was doing his thing, and it's mm. really cool. You know, it's like just a nice build up, and you know, I could see how that could go over well in many different environments. Yeah. You know. So. Do you live over in St. Pete now? I do, okay. yeah. I was born and raised in Tampa, and I, I crossed the bridge about seven years ago. Ooh, I never yeah. never went back. Never went back. <laughs> no, I, you know, it's funny. Is I, I perform a lot more out here. A lot of my friends are out here. Um, you know, yeah. some of my that's favorite so, restaurants are out here. That's so yeah. weird, because I usually hear the opposite from people that are, like, from Tampa, and they're like, oh, we have, we perform all the time in St. Pete at the Benz or wherever. Right, right. You know, we're always, so you're saying the opposite, that you live in St. Pete, but you're actually coming over here a lot. I perform, yeah, I perform over here a lot, it seems like, you know. Wow. And, and my girlfriend, she started a little, uh, 
soap company a few years back, so we do oh. more markets out here than we do in St. Pete for some reason. Don't know why, but yeah, that's cool. What's the yeah. soap company? It's called Beard and Beauty. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen something on Instagram. It's for that. yeah, it's it's probable for sure. You know, we're <laughs> we're not like a big company. Or yeah, anything, yeah. You know, do everything like small batches and like organic and stuff. Um, it's really great stuff, and uh, we yeah, like I said, we do more markets in Tampa than than St. Pete or, wow. or anywhere else really. So yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't, why that is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It seems like a lot of the a lot of the coolness has been in St. Pete for a while, but now yeah. for various reasons, that's starting to move and spread out into different places. Too. Absolutely. But uh, you mentioned Paper Crane, though. Yeah, I, that's a venue I haven't been to yet, but I've been hearing a lot about. I love it. That it's like one of the coolest spots in St. Pete. Something about it. I, it's because I think it's because the, um, you know, the the guys from Polyenzo, mm-hmm. some of them live there. Um, JT Brown, uh, you know local artist he lives there i think he he found the spot and i think he was there for a while um so what they've done is they've taken this like kind of warehouse space um and just you know they haven't done anything glorious to like the the building itself you know, but they built a nice stage in there and they've got pretty decent pa and there's a little bar section um you know uh, it's just got this really like speakeasy vibe you know but yeah. when you walk through the door you don't feel like you're at a venue you feel like you're like a part of it like you like 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 a sense of ownership almost you know it's just super low-key and it's a good space you can fit a good number of people in there um so i highly suggest it you know yeah no i'm gonna have to go yeah for sure i'm actually doing the album release show uh may 12th friday may 12th there um we've got uh friedback's gonna perform Mm -hmm. um roger thomas is gonna perform uh, and then we're doing a couple little uh, staggered between the main stage sets. We're doing some bar sets. Uh, so my buddy Tommy Sims is going to do a little set and Carrie Courtney as well. Sweet. So we've got a lot of like really great like local you know talents all coming together to just kind of celebrate this little four song achievement of mine. You yeah, know? And, yeah. And they're all my buddies and um, very supportive people. And uh, so I'm very happy to have them there and be a part of it. It should be a really fun night. That's really cool. And that's cool that there's a space like that where you can curate something totally, you know, without having to deal with other outside kind of pressures. Absolutely. Guess, you, know, you can kind of make the space what you want. Right on. Yeah. I, you know, I, I right after I played there, I was like, Oh man, I, I got to do something here. And yeah. so, you know, living in St. Pete, I, I wanted to try to do a, a Friday, Saturday kind of deal, like play a show in Tampa as an album release and then do one in St. Pete. But it just didn't work out that way. And the shins are playing Saturday. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. You can't compete with the shins. <laughs> yeah. Man. No, no way. And they haven't been here in so long. And that yeah. was the initial date of the album release. And then I oh. looked online and uh, my girlfriend actually was like, oh, the shins are coming the 13th. I was like, oh, my God, we got yeah, <laughs> we gotta got to change the nah, date. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's literally going to be right down the street because I want to be at the shins, too. Sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's May 12th. You know, I, I wish I could have set up a Tampa release show because I know a lot of people don't like to cross the bridge yeah <laughs> yeah it's, you know, you're gonna be drinking having yeah, a good time sure. you know you don't want to risk it and i would say take an uber but that sounds very expensive yeah so. from from tampa to st p that's a expensive yeah. uber so just to change gears a little bit so growing sure. up in tampa mm-hmm. um and then you were in a another band before this right you know like right. how, how long have you been kind of in the tampa music scene oh man like so i got a guitar when i was like 14 okay. and i just like stared at it for a year and uh then i started fiddling around so I'd say my first band, I was probably about 17 or so, mm-hmm. 16 or 17, and it was called Adam Smashers Named Susie. And okay. It was, you know, my buddy Cliff at the time, he, uh, he was like the founder of the group, and um, it was just really bizarre punk rock. They were really into like science fiction, like Doctor Who and okay, yeah. uh, Red Dwarf and stuff like that. And uh, so I think that came out in the lyrical content of the, of the well, in the name too. Yeah, it's well. a very strange name. So it was very punk rock, and but I don't even know what style of punk rock it was. So that was my my, my first band, mm. and I remember like you know playing you know just like pubs and bars and stuff, and being not even old enough to be a patron there, right. but I was performing there. We were in the same boat when we used to be in a band playing like the old brass mug, right? But like yeah. not being old enough to actually be in no, there. <laughs> yeah, Def- I definitely played there too yeah. for sure. And then that let, you know, then I, I met other bands that were doing similar things. And then so after about a year, I left that band. Um, oddly enough, Tim McTagg from Under Oath replaced mm, yeah. me in Adam Smashers. Really? He actually played in Adam Smashers for a while. Um, I don't know. Yeah, he's from St. Pete, right? Around. Yeah, around yeah. here, for sure. So, yeah, then I, I 
made friends with a couple dudes. Um, they were in a band called Delivery Boy. Okay. And that was, again, another like punk rock type outfit. A little faster, a little more technical guitar riffs. And I was really all about getting technical with guitars. Like, how fast can I play? And yeah, all yeah. these butterflies and right. palm muting and stuff. Watching John Petrucci videos. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like, or like uh, you know, listening to anything on Fat Records, basically. Okay, you okay. Know? The, other, the other side of the spectrum. Right, Yeah. exactly. And, uh, and then that led to a band called Saga 24-7, which eventually turned into Amberlynn. Mm. Um, so, uh, I left, I left Saga. We already had the name Amberlynn, um, picked out. I think there was like a couple demos that we were jamming on, nothing too serious, but they were pretty set on changing the sound of the band and, and becoming Amberlynn. Yeah. Um, but I had a daughter on the way and we weren't making any money. So I kind of got out of it. Yeah. Um, then probably about a year later they got their big break. So that was really great for them, you know? Yeah. Um, so I took a few years off cause I didn't know what it would be like to be a dad, you know? Sure. That, so, I mean, that's a whole, that's a whole nother beast right that, there. Yeah. It was a whole, yeah, <laughs> totally. And fortunately my, my daughter, she's awesome. She's 15 now, but she was a very easy baby, slept through the night, ate well, you know, just very good kid, you know, made it easy for me, you know, yeah. being a first time father. Um, and then, so I took a few years off and then, you know, linked up with a couple of my buddies and then we formed a group called Mouse Fire. Um, we didn't start actually getting into the music scene really. We, we actually rehearsed in my, my mom's like storage unit for like probably almost two years. Wow. We literally, we would just like, we would just blaze a bunch of herb and drink a bunch of wine and just write. We didn't even have a singer at the time. We were debating who was going to sing, you know, and so it was Joey Bruce and myself and my buddy Aaron Venrick was on drums and Justin Kaysen was on bass. And so we would just write these songs and we're like, well, somebody has to sing or we have to find a singer. <laughs> and so, uh, so Joey stepped up to the, to the plate and I loved his voice. It was very breathy and airy and it was just the perfect sound. Um, so then we... We recorded an EP in St. Augustine, and then um, I showed a friend of mine, and they were on a small uh, indie label called Luho Records, mm -hmm. and my, my buddy Eric was like, hey, I'm going to send this off to, to Luho. Is that cool? I was like, well, sure. You know, how can I? Of course, I want a record label to hear it, even if yeah. they're an indie label that, you know, doesn't have much money or anything. Like, that's cool. They can at least distribute it and get some press behind it. Sure. So they really liked it, and they're like, we want to do a full length. Can you can you record another six songs or four songs? And we're like, actually we can, we have six more. We can. So we went back to St. Augustine, um, recorded the six more. And then actually we ran out of money and time. So Joey and I had to go a few months later to Marietta, Georgia to finish the vocals. Um, and I'm then going that all over the place. We, yeah, we were for <laughs> sure. That was a fun trip though. It was just he and I, uh, in a car and just, uh, our friendship it was it was a lot of fun i haven't seen him in a while he's he lives out in uh, winter haven so it's okay. kind of far yeah. but um so yeah so we we released that first album in 2007 on luho records and then uh some time went by we couldn't really tour much because joey had a really high-end job working at a golf course um mm. like a superintendent of a golf course or something interesting so we can never really go out of florida or, or for like an extended period of time so I think after a couple of years of, of knowing that we needed to tour, we needed to take it further, we needed, you know, and this is before, like, the internet was, was doing things with music, but it wasn't yeah. like, they were still trying to figure out how you can get, you know, your music out there and get known, and I don't know. It was, was just... still like the MySpace era, you know? Exactly, absolutely. Yeah. We were on MySpace, and we were, you know, you'd go add people and, you know, see if they'd like your music and stuff. And, right. Um, but yeah, so we ended up deciding to uh, to part ways, and then that's when I picked up the reins on uh, on singing, and it was insanely challenging. And uh, so then we released our second record in 2010 called Big Emotion, uh, and I th I, th I feel like we should have just changed our band name because it had a totally different feel, a yeah. totally different sound. But you know, the people that really liked Mouse Fire um, either loved it or hated it, you know, and. Uh, but then we were making a lot of new fans because we were traveling so much. Like we just, the three of us got in the van, you know, like built out a, uh, we put a queen size mattress in the back and built a little riser to put all of our luggage underneath. And it right was, on. you know, it was pretty, pretty cozy. And I mean, we, we were gone for six months out of 2010. Like, wow. and it was all DIY. Like yeah. we did all of our own, you know, we didn't have a booking agent or anything like that. It's a long time to be on the road. It was, yes. Yeah, yeah. so we'd go out for like a month come back for like two weeks, go out for like two months, come back for a week. And then, uh, you know, 
and we just did that for, and after six months we were done we actually we broke up <laughs> that was it that yeah, was we it. were like dude we can't do this anymore like we're broke we're tired we're we're like beating each other up you know and um so yeah that was i've been in the music scene around here for, yeah, a, for while. a while yeah and then you took some time off and yep. then now's pajamas now pajamas yeah and when where did the the whole idea for pajamas come from Honestly, I really love comfy clothes. <laughs> like okay. so so when yeah. I get, when I get home and like I don't have to leave the house anymore, I'm just pajamas all the way. Yeah. So, yeah, my girlfriend and I, you know, she was like helping me brainstorm, you know, names and she's like, "I really like pajamas," you know. And like yeah. that was one of the ones that came out. I was like, "You know, it makes sense. I'm always in them, you know." Yeah. So, <laughs> do you perform now. in the pajamas? No, I'd like to find if I could if I could sew, if I could make yeah. my own, yeah. I would, I'd probably make because I, I want it like loose through the legs, but kind of tapered and tight at the ankle, almost like a jogger. Okay. But, yeah, yeah. but a different material, um, pockets. And then, you know, I, I, I like bigger, like baggier shirts, you know, like, yeah. like flowy stuff. Playing in Tampa, you never hear anybody's like, oh, Los, los Payamas. And you never hear that? Yeah, uh, actually, I, I worked <laughs> in a lot of kitchens for a long time, and okay. uh, I work with a lot of Latinos, and yeah. that, that's what they say. They're oh, like, Payamas. Payamas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what my mom would say. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they call me uh, Chef Payamas. And I'm like, oh. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great you know? So are you a chef, too? I, I am. Dude, yeah. a man of yeah. many yeah. talents. Where yeah. I took a, well, I was at Casita Taqueria in, mm. uh, in St. Pete for three years, right around three years. That was my first like real like chef type gig. Like I got yeah. to do specials and homemade soups and, you know, everything was homemade there and it was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, Don, the owner, you know, really gave me a chance and I had, I had managed a lot of restaurants before then. Mm -hmm. I'd never called myself a chef. I loved to cook, but I, I was like, I'm not a chef, you know? And even now I don't even like to say chef because... What I did is a chef's job, but I don't know like certain things like like what they're doing at Rooster and Till. It blows my mind. Like yeah. I, I don't know, you know or Ichi Coro, yeah, you know stuff <laughs> like that. Like to me, like those are, and they probably would say the same thing. They'd be like, "Well, I'm good at what I do," you know. Like mm -hmm. that's what I think. Like I loved what I did. Uh, love like you know Latin flavors and Asian flavors. I love to to mix them, but I I love just simple. Uh, authentic like Mexican food, you know, mm -hmm. I've, and I've learned a lot about Mexican cuisine by working with so many Mexicans, you know. Yeah. So that's my passion in food. But honestly, I don't even care to cook anymore now. Like I'm so busy. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I'm like I, I really and I love to cook, but I just I don't have the tools that I did in the restaurant, mm. and I just I just don't do it as much anymore. I love easy food now, so you know. Well, you should find a way to merge the two. You know, there's that guy, uh, Sauce Boss. He's, oh, a dude, the he's, a he's a he's a blues he's a blues guitar sauce. player, but he also makes his own like hot sauces and stuff too. And he'll like do both, where he'll like perform and then like make jambalaya for the. Oh, crowd, that's amazing! You know, so hey, that could be fun. <laughs> that could be great. Like I, I could, would go to that show if you I, did that. I could sling tacos like you know. Right after, right after. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. like before I play, and then right after I yeah, play. Yeah, or make it like time. part cooking show, part right. show show. That's know? a great idea. <laughs> I, I might have to use that. Dude, do it and invite us. <laughs> and oh, this song is called Jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jalapeno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, that's awesome. And well, I am doing uh, because I I do make soap. Oh, you're uh, right. I am doing pajamas line of soap. Oh, so okay. that's some that's merch I've never really seen at someone's No, I, I I'm so, we're gonna have to talk to you more about yeah. that. That's what's like, that gonna smell like? Yeah. Oh man, I don't I really don't know because I'm gonna I think I'm gonna call one pillow fight, you know. Like okay, a, all right. Uh, pajama party, you know, like there's all sorts of names that we can, Dude, we that can think of. That could be cool though if you're like if you play like Okeechobee or Bonnaroo or one of these fests where people right. are out all day sweating their and asses need, off and they yeah, need it. They need soap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so. I make deodorant too, so that might Oh, uh, oh hey, man, yeah. You know? yeah, definitely need that at some of these right. festivals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's yeah. But yeah, that that'd be a fun merch for sure. But yeah, I, I like the idea of the food thing too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're you really are a, a true renaissance man you know you're you can cook you can make soap and you can yeah. make music yeah yeah well thank you for saying so i you know i i don't know what i am besides someone that has to make stuff like i yeah. i can't sit idly by and, and not produce something and i like to think of like my music or my art and like anything i do i like to think of as like i hope it's like a cultural offering like yeah and if i never make a buck you know, if I never get, you know, notoriety or whatever, at least I know that I, I put into the world and, and at least the people that heard it or saw it or whatever format it's in, uh, if they felt anything from it, that's awesome, you know, so. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's that's the goal, man. I just want to keep, like, helping our culture, you know, and, and that if music's the one outlet I get for it, that's that's fine by me. I respect that. 
Thanks, I man. That a lot. Yeah. Well, we're pretty much out of time. So before we go, anything else you wanna you wanna throw down the social accounts or anything? Uh, you yeah. Say? I mean, Instagram, just pajamas music at pajamas music. Uh, you know, obviously on Facebook, just look at pajamas music. Um, you know, the the album is out now. Smile lines. You can find it on any any of your you know favorite streaming services. Yeah. You can you can download it on iTunes. You can download it on Amazon. It's actually cheaper on Amazon. Yeah. Um, it's out there. Smile lines. You'll be able to find it on the Cigar City Radio companion playlist on Spotify. Ooh, Listen I like to it that. there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's on a couple of my playlists, actually. I work on a few, you know, new music plays. More for my personal taste, but right. it's on. It's definitely Smile Lines. That song in particular, I've put on a few playlists. Thank you so I much. Can't get that hook out of my head. Thank so. you. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely listen to it. Check it out. Pajamas. I think I'm addicted to the fade out. Addicted to the fade out. Addicted, addicted to the fade out. Damn, I, I think I'm addicted to the fade out. Addicted to the fade out. Addicted, addicted to the fade out. Damn, I, I think I'm addicted to the fade out. Addicted to the fade out. Addicted, addicted to the fade out. Damn, I, I think I'm addicted to the fade out. Addicted to the fade out. Addicted, addicted to the fade out. And now, Pepper's Lament. Dum, da dum, da dum, da dum, ba 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 Da-dum-ba-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-bom-b